So imagine if we delayed teaching the alphabet to our children until they were 15 years of age. What effect would that have? Well, this is what I think. We'd suck at spelling <laughs> and we probably couldn't say or read the word Stone Age until we got to university, if at all. But there is a kind of alphabet that we do delay until uh, they're 15 years old. In fact, in the case of the alphabet, the, we get in early because we realise this. So we get in at sort of like a, even before kindergarten or even sometimes parents do it before birth. Uh, and, and it's for good reason because they understand the benefits of an early start to um, the process of reading and writing. But in the case of the alphabet that I call the periodic table, um, it is delayed until we're 15. And if we just simplify the periodic table a little by closing the gaps and putting the rows together to make one long row, we can see that it is just a list, very much like the alphabet, except where the alphabet has 26 letters, the periodic table has 92 that show the 92 different kinds of atoms that make up our physical world. All of it, even when we look into outer space, we see the same 92 kinds of atoms out there. And whereas in the case of the alphabet, we can build a word, we can do the same with the periodic table, except that we build a chemical word, or we call it a chemical formula. In the case of the, this particular chemical formula, HOH, it's got two H's in it, so scientists merge the H's and just put a little two down there to make it look simpler, if you think that's simpler. Now, in the, in the case of the alphabet, all of the words, all of the letters and the words and the sentences together construct literature. In the same parallel way, all of the symbols, the letters of the periodic table and the formulas, construct atomic theory. And the question I'm kind of asking today is, can primary school students understand atomic theory? Can they benefit from the same early start that we give with the alphabet? This question occurred to me when I had a, a walk in the park with my son, seven-year-old son, Tom, and he asked a riveting question. What's the world made of, Dad? You should never ask that question of a chemistry teacher. <laughs> you might get the long answer. But the short answer, of course, is atoms, son. And the ensuing conversation, I realised that he could visualise the world microscopically as being made of these invisibly tiny particles that were bonding and unbonding and always moving. And that was the day that I realised that my son could understand atomic theory. But the question is whether other sons and daughters could also understand it. So intrigued, I went to his school, Ithaca Creek State School, and asked his deputy principal, Shani Tompkins, if I could visit his class. She agreed, even though this was going to be way outside the curriculum standards. And this is what happened. Larry Atoms are notorious thieves. What do they steal? Electrons. Especially when their guys aren't looking. We have the core nucleus. What's in the core nucleus of an atom? Neutrons and electrons. Yeah, and we're only worrying about the protons for the moment. All right. And then we have what do we have around the outside? Electrons. The valency of carbon is four. four. So you need to obey those bonding rules. Um, it's really cool the way they like bond to each other. Hydrogen, yes. Take the O and the H off the end of the alanine molecule and the H off the glycine molecule and connect the two molecules together to make a mini, mini protein. protein.
it seems that his classmates could also understand atomic theory. And the thing, though, though was, was I actually imagining it? Maybe there was some kind of confirmation bias in this, and I, I was um, having some wishful thinking. So I, what I really needed was some kind of hard evidence of learning taking place. I was very fortunate to meet Dr. Carol Heusler and Dr. Jenny Donovan from the University of Southern Queensland, who were science education researchers, and they agreed to test this bold claim. And we, we got a, a, a pilot study going with a school, a grade four <coughs> class, and they did an interviews with the students before a 10 lesson um, intervention that I gave. And this is their understanding before the 10 lessons. After the 10 lessons, dramatic in increase in understanding to a kind of a high school level of understanding. Now these were oral responses and a researchers, it's more research robust if they can get written responses. So they asked them if they could do drawings of their atoms and molecules. And here are some examples. In the case of Sebastian, he was able to draw an oxygen atom with its protons and electrons. We didn't cover neutrons in the class. Um, and in the case of um, Lachlan, Lachlan, this is a really idiosyncratic diagram for um, an H2O molecule, but it's accurate. He's showing how covalent bonding can happen with the electrons of the oxygen and hydrogens overlapping to form bonds. Pretty advanced stuff. Uh, another curious example was Marcia, who was actually in year one. And she insisted on joining the class because her older brother was in it. And uh, she, at the end of it, she was able to show that carbon dioxide had double bonds and it was linear. This is high school stuff. She's, she was six years old. That's like nine or ten years in, in advance of what we expect. So the, the two big conclusions that Jenny and Carol came to were that firstly, um, primary school kids understand atomic theory to a high school level. And perhaps more importantly, they, they discovered that they love it. They run to class, they take it home with them and talk about it incessantly at home to their brothers and they try to teach their parents atomic theory. If there's a clash between atomic theory and swimming, they choose atomic theory. So the, the, it was really a, quite astonishing, the, the engagement that we got. But it's not really practical for a high school teacher to be teaching it around all these primary schools. What really is necessary is that primary school teachers be able to teach it. And Shani introduced me to a colleague of hers, Libby Jordan, and Libby was the principal of Eagleby State School, and she agreed to start this program in her school and um, have all of her teachers teach it. I would do the initial teaching, but they would then take over. Kelly Kemp was a very talented primary school teacher who led up the team, and this is one of her lessons with a grade two and one class. Everyone say two hydrogen atoms. Two
Well, I hope you can see that they're really into it. And the, um, the standard is really high. The interesting thing is that this was a revision class. These kids learnt it a year earlier. Some of them were four years old when they were learning this material. So we obviously have an opportunity to here to up, the, up our game as educators. We needed to now take it to the world because now we know that primary school students can understand it and primary school teachers can teach it. So Patna School in Bangkok is a British international school. I think definitely the children are ready. I was worried that the abstract ideas might kind of go over their head a little bit, but the way it's explained in a very simple way, um, using concrete resources, and the microscopes has really helped them to understand. I think I think they are ready. So to actually see the atoms, do you remember the name of the microscope we would need? Electron, Electron microscope. microscope. The initial session that we had on Monday was really, really interesting to watch because Ian started really, really slowly um, and he walked them very, very gently through. So by the end of the first 10 minutes, he got to the point where he was explaining to them if they really wanted to see one atom in an apple, they would, the apple would need to be the size of the Earth and that blew their minds, so he had them hooked right from the start. It's interesting what we introduce them to this concept in the sense that it's something they want to know. Like just one atom. An, an just element one. is only one type of atom in one, in one whole object. And in water there's two atoms, two types. What types of atoms are in water? Um, I don't know. Oxygen. The blue. And it's not quite the blue thing. Uh, no, it's a red if I said water, is H2O. H2O. What do you think it might be? No. no. Hydrogen. Awesomely cute. Um, and we've taken it further east to the Philippines. Here's an example, which is a one hour lesson, or less than an hour, and you can see how much material that they cover. It's, another two, it's a 2,500 student school. So that lesson was less than an hour and they, they went through, they started with an H2O molecule, then went to an O2 molecule, CO2, CH4, um, acetic acid, then um, amino acid, and then finally they built a, a, a protein molecule. And as Ruben Meerman says, the, the famous surfing scientist, these are the molecules that make their own bodies. So to, to understand and to be health literate, you really have to know atoms. So there are a number of reasons to, to teach atomic theory early. And one, one is that um, it will give, it'll be really, really good for society. Society will have more literate 
research scientists that can innovate outcomes that can make us healthier and wealthier. And also research scientists are needed in order to solve the planet's problems. Like perhaps we can produce pocket-sized nuclear reactors or lab-grown meat and that kind of thing. So the, these are desperately needed solutions and we can do this by having more literate students go through to our universities. But I think the biggest reason to do it is to make science interesting again. In primary schools, the, the lessons are capped at the senses, what the students sort of, what they can see and feel and observe is uh, what they're limited to, like observing ice melting or bending plastic. But in order to see and observe atoms, you actually have to use your imagination. That's the, that's the sense that's required. And the imagination is without limit. So it means that we're giving students a much greater um, sense of space within the walls of the classroom. Because I think there's a lot of a sense of almost claustrophobia amongst primary school kids who are con whereas if we can provide a kind of um, a mental pathway for them to see this vast mi microscopic world and build mental models of the world, we can set them free. And that's, that's kind of what I, I sense about students when they're learning this, that they feel free. Well, actually, what we're trying to do here is introduce this program to every classroom in the world because we now have the evidence that students can learn it and that teachers can teach it. So if you, have, if you know a primary school, if you know a, a principal or a student or a parent who are interested, or maybe you can suggest that they be interested in introducing atomic theory into their school, please do so. And we are absolutely <coughs> prepared to help them do that. That's what we're now doing full time. That's our, our mission in life is to make this happen. Thank you.